thing that is the most astounding to me is how far Joe had fallen from the clutches of alcoholism and the way it controlled his life. It's, it's mind-boggling to try to think about what, what he had to do to un unleash or unlock that grasp to become his, his true authentic self. But Joe changes and he overcomes that dark side and it all comes together when he comes to Patagonia. I am not impressed with anybody's title. Um, I fish with some of the biggest CEOs in the country, presidents of the United States, dignitaries from Europe and all. But Joe Brooks is one of the most impressive people I've ever met in my life. genesis for Argentine fly fishing began in a snowy Lexington Avenue outfitter's shop in New York City. Um, Jorge Donovan was traveling from Argentina and he by chance met up with Joe Brooks who was pretty much a traveling writer in those days. Jorge meets Joe by accident at a fly shop in New York, and he invites Joe to come down. Uh, he actually comes down, I think, if I'm not wrong, in January of 55. And that January, they didn't mess around these two. Uh, in January, Joe's on a plane doing this milk run all the way down to Buenos Aires. I mean, he saw, he saw opportunity to explore. I mean, the guy, the guy was an explorer and discoverer. Let's, let's be clear about that point. And in those days, getting to Buenos Aires isn't anything like it is now. It's, it's not as simple as it is today. It's vastly different. All of the scenery, mountains, trees, crystal clear glacial water, Nobody knows about this place. It is hidden. The gem, you know, it's a hidden gem type of thing. He saw, he saw Candyland. <laughs> Argentine fly fishing before the 50s was restricted to a very tiny uh, fraternity of people. There was no uh, pressure on the ecosystem. There, was, there were no fishermen fishing. And for Joe to arrive when he did, it was just a perfect storm. It's like somebody with all the ability to catch the fish in this environment, and there they are. And you have all these, um, you know, uh, famous friends of Joe's, uh, like Baby Anturin is here, Jorge Donovan, and Andre de Ganet. This is the place he used to stay in the 50s and 60s. No I mean, Joe came down, yeah, probably six, five, six, seven times. Yeah. I mean, this is just a great view. It hasn't changed much. Yeah. They would come all the way down to Patagonia, uh, which was a long, long way, uh, old gravel road. But they had the whole place to themselves, yeah, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that was priceless. Yeah. You know, Fish being here huge. in the 50s and 60s, oh, man, I mean, even the 70s were great. So he's 54 years old, so he's not exactly a young guy, is he? No, but, but he's, he's mad yes. fisherman, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. He brought uh, uh, fiberglass rods, uh, you know, uh, fly lines that didn't exist here. They were fishing silk lines in, in Argentina back then. I mean, they were fishing like this with a book. Of, you know, yes, you know, that's like, right. The English style. The English style yes, like yeah. yeah. All of a sudden comes Joe making a, boom, a double haul like this with a fiberglass rod, and they were 
astonished. I mean, they were, they, they couldn't believe what he was doing. Which they hadn't seen ever before, you know. So they were totally mind blown when they saw that. You know, and I can just, I can just visualize Jorge Donovan and, 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 and BB on the river. Joe's first cast must have freaked them out. It gives you much more control of your line and much more accuracy and, and, and uh, total control. You know, if you don't double haul, you're, you're, it means that you don't know how to fly cast. These are guys who are restricted to a particular style because that's what they they knew, but with that style, the environment w was working against them. You had massive winds, you have deep water, you've got big fish. You have to do away with that dogma of, 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 of going like this, you know. Uh, people like, like Joe Brooks changed uh, the sport. And then he starts landing those big monsters. You know, total heresy, you know. Uh, breaking the rules and, and going against the, the dogma. He he brought down the double hall. He brought down the he brought down the fiberglass rods. He brought down the lines. He brought he brought new techniques for knot tying. The effectiveness of, of catching fish, uh, doing the I mean using those flies, casting that way, using those rods, and reading the water. I mean they have never seen that. The impact is like walking into a dark room. And turning the light on. Well, it was just like a total uh, uh, paradigm shift. He caught big fish, big fish, big fish, and then he puts it back into the water. But Jorge actually was the one who actually understood that concept better than anybody else, Jorge Donovan. So Joe gives them all the tools and techniques to catch and kill more fish, but then he teaches them catch and release. Very few people are open-minded in order to absorb and to actually embrace new things that change their, 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 their dogma. It's those people who actually change their world. Today, every trout caught here in northern Patagonia goes back into the river. They were so passionate about that that they actually were, were, were compelled to pass the legacy to, uh, to others. There are individuals, there are families, there are towns, there are whole communities that exist, economically, are viable, because of that, that inflection point in time and the manner and the character of the individual who was creating the change. I think people are not aware of the magnitude of the importance of the things they're doing when they are doing this. It changed their world. The prophet is somebody who enlightens you of something you've never dreamed before, of a new truth, of a new uh, certainty that actually changes your life.